My 38 years of nonprofit work, I've had the privilege of serving on numerous boards of directors, been president of a lot of boards, and even served as an advisor to boards. And the one question I get more than any is, what's the role of the board member in fundraising? Today, we're going to discuss that role, so stay tuned. In the early 2000s, I was serving on the board of a nonprofit organization in the Washington, D.C. area. The board had hired a young, energetic woman to serve as its executive director. She was gifted in so many areas, but seemed to have a real fear of fundraising. Having been on the board about a year at the time, I was able to turn them around to the importance of their role in development, but I knew that it didn't stop there. My role as a board member also including getting the executive director to embrace and incorporate sound development strategies. I needed to get her past her fears. I can still remember meeting with her and another board member on a Saturday morning during her annual evaluation and the area of fundraising came up. She shared with us her aversion to fundraising and during a confrontational moment said to us, if you make me do fundraising, I'm going to have to leave this position. But I asked her to pray and at least try a little longer to focus on friend raising rather than fundraising. Now I'm an eternal optimist, but even I didn't give this a lot of hope. To my surprise on Monday night, she called me and said that after a long two days of praying, she felt led to give it a try, but that she needed me to coach her along the way. Well, long story short, she slowly started to embrace the concept of building friends and not funds. Within five years, she had become one of the most effective leaders I'd ever worked with in the area of development. The turnaround was astonishing but I believe it was attributed to her surrendering this issue to the Lord and embracing her gifts and working with people. But I learned a valuable lesson as well, that as a board member, I need to take the lead in development, model it for the other board members and staff, and get others to understand their role in fundraising as well. Whether you are a board member yourself, an executive director, or senior leader of a nonprofit, it's important to know that there should never be a question in anyone's mind as to whether a board member should be involved in development fundraising. The answer is yes. The fact is, if a board member does not want to be involved in development fundraising to some level or another, they should not be a board member. I know that seems harsh, but it's very true. In previous videos, I've mentioned that there are three components to development public relations, recruitment, and fundraising. Without a doubt, a board member should be involved in at least one, if not all of these components in some way or another. From a public relations standpoint, they should be able to be a representative of your organization to the community, to your audience, and to your donors. From a recruitment standpoint, they should help find the human resources that are the lifeblood of any nonprofit, full-time and part-time employees, and volunteers. And from the fundraising standpoint, they should do all they can to help raise money for the organization. There isn't a board member alive that can at least call donors or partners to thank them for their gift to the organization. Fewer may be able to help by introducing the organizational leader to a friend or colleague, and even fewer actually make an ask for a gift on behalf of the organization. But all these are important and should be part of the role of a board member. There's nine musts when it comes to a board member's involvement. They are as followed. A board member must, number one, know their responsibilities in fundraising and be trained to do them. Number two, be involved in the strategic planning and development planning process to establish ownership. Number three, set an example through their giving, not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. Number four, be an ambassador for the organization to their contacts, including potential donors. Number five, identify and cultivate prospective donors and partners. Number six, 
be trained to solicit prospective donors or partners alone with the executive director and with others. Number seven, take a leadership role in development and fundraising events and activities. Number eight, be able to motivate and direct others to do development and fundraising. And number nine, be able to thank donors in whatever way asked, but also on their own. A board member needs to be recruited for the willingness to be a life partner with the organization. Labor, influence, finances, and expertise. From the labor standpoint, a commitment of time is a very important commodity today, and finding a board member willing to give up a Saturday morning or weeknight to attend a board meeting or organizational event is very valuable. Someone who is willing to labor in areas that will help you bring income into the organization is critical. Host a table and invite friends to sit with them at the annual dinner. Hand out treats and beverages at a walkathon, or make calls to thank donors for their gifts are all ways a board member can bring their labor to bear for the organization. Influence. A board member should be recruited because they have some influence in the community. They may be a prominent business owner. They may be actively involved in a service organization such as Rotary or Kiwanis or in a prominent leadership position in their church. All these provide opportunity to influence the opinions of others, and that influence can be brought to bear in sharing with others opportunities to be involved in the organization they serve or ways people can give financially. Finances. Board members need to have a willingness to give financially to the organization and even better, an ability to give to the organization. The ability of board members to give varies greatly. But every board member should be giving something to the organization that they serve. They will be better board members for it, and they can model giving for others. A gift from a board member helps encourage other board members to give, helps current prospective donors to give, and definitely motivates staff to use their abilities to ask others to give. Gifts by board members are often used as lead gifts given before any fundraising campaign or effort. In addition, this is the first step towards a long-term goal of 100% participation from the board. Not all giving the same amount, but all giving something. Those giving sacrificially each year is even better. Not equal giving, but equal sacrifice. Expertise. Board members should be recruited because they possess certain skills and talents that add value to the organization. They can be skills lacking in staff. They can be skills that will enhance an already skilled staff. I've seen board members help in areas such as financial management, marketing, strategic planning, and fundraising. Skills that enhance the organization are desired and should be proactively sought after when recruiting board members. Board members need to embrace certain principles in development and fundraising. They are as follows. First, even though the board members have a number of responsibilities related to governance of the organization, a basic understanding of development fundraising is critical. Boards that have a firm financial footing are that way because board members are actively involved in raising funds and friends for the organization. They see themselves as key participants in the financial success or failure of the organization. Second, for a nonprofit to succeed and become fully funded, board members must face the reality that they need to be committed to the organization's development plan, program, and scope of exercises. Those activities that win, keep, and lift owners to new levels of involvement. But there is a reality check for you each year. Some serious questions must be asked of the board and leadership of the organization on an annual basis. They are as follows. Does the board's composition include a majority of directors with the ability, willingness, and commitment to give or acquire financial support? Are board members clear about their role in development and in their fundraising responsibilities? Is it clarified before the member accepts an offer to join the board and even better during the interview process? 
Do all board members make generous or even sacrificial gifts to the organization? Are most board members involved in seeking and soliciting gifts for the, the organization? Are board members thoroughly and carefully trained before going out to solicit funds for the organization? Is there a strong active board development committee that understands the organization's needs and do board members grasp the goals and objectives of the organization? Can they communicate those to potential donors? Does the board view the development program as a significant and integral part of the organization? Does the development director play an important role in decision-making process of the organization as a whole? Are board members active participants in communicating vision and opportunities to the organization? Are the board members clear about the executive director's role in fundraising? Is the role clarified at the time of hiring? Does the board evaluate the total development program annually? The active involvement and wholehearted embracement of board members of the development and fundraising efforts is vital. Board members must be leaders and activists in designing policies and strategies for a strong development and fundraising program. If you hope to ever move your fundraising efforts to the next level and become fully funded, you must have a board member that is not only supportive of, but actively involved in all aspects of development efforts. Don't be left behind because you lack board members with a strong desire to come alongside and help carry the responsibilities in development fundraising. Find those board members and put them to work now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leave a comment below if there are things you especially liked or if there's topics you'd like to address. And let this community of life changers know you're part of making a difference in our world. If you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the release of the next video. If you wish to follow me on Instagram, do so at Jim W. Dempsey. And if you have questions, go to, on to Twitter at Jim W. Dempsey and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you wish to be part of a community of like-minded leaders, join our Life Changers group on Facebook. If you want to know what to do and what to say on an appointment with a major donor, watch this video and take your development efforts to the next level. As always, I wish you the best as you strive to become fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.